Shares of private equity giant Blackstone lower in the pre-market. Earnings per share beat estimates by a penny, but distributable earnings fell close to 40 percent versus last year, and revenue missed analyst expectations. I want to go inside the numbers and bring in John Gray, president and chief operating officer of the Blackstone Group. Uh, on the upside, uh, you've amassed an enormous amount of money. We're talking now a trillion dollars, uh, and as the Financial Times just said yesterday, this should be a time of celebration, but at the same time, there hasn't been uh, the kind of asset sales that have historically uh, created some of those distributable earnings. Speak to it, if you could, John. Sure, Andrew. It's great to be here. Um, this was an important milestone for us this quarter. We crossed over a trillion dollars of assets under management. And if you go back in time and you think about Pete Peterson, Steve Schwarzman creating this firm in 1985 with $400,000, it has been a remarkable journey. And we've gotten here because we've delivered performance to clients over a long period of time, in good times, in bad times, and also because we've really had a spirit of innovation. We're constantly pushing into new areas, new places. This is something Steve has always pushed for. And when we look forward, yes, we're in a challenging time today, but as you look out over the horizon, things will get better. And what gives us a ton of confidence is alternatives are really coming of age. If you think about investors today, they're saying to themselves, I can trade some liquidity off for higher returns. And that's true with insurance companies, pension funds, and individual investors. So we feel huge optimism about the future. Let me ask you, though, this. Um, I think even Warren Buffett has reflected this idea that, that size ultimately can be the enemy of performance. Yeah, we actually see it as the opposite. If you look at our firm and you look at our performance over time, it's actually gotten better over time in most of our areas. And I attribute that to the fact that in private markets, being able to write a big check is a competitive advantage. In a market like this, being able to do a $14 billion deal with Emerson and their climate technology business made a ton of sense. When I think about the resources we have, our portfolio operations, the ability to intervene in companies, again, the resources make a huge difference. And then when you think about what I think is most important from scale, it's data and insights. So right. we see inflation coming. We see uh, risks on the horizon earlier than others. And we see some of the big trends out there, be it India or green energy transition. I think all of that is hugely important. So we really value the scale when we think about delivering returns for our customers. So, John, help us with some of those insights. Where do you see inflation right now? And what, what is your expectation around what the Fed may or may not do uh, for the remainder of this year? Well, I think the good news is the Fed is winning the war on inflation. They're not ready to declare victory. But from our portfolio, what we see is shipping costs coming down, input costs now less than 2 percent uh, growth at our companies. Wages have gone from 7 plus percent last year to less than 5 percent. And the forward indicators, when you look at vacancies and hiring, all of that shows to us a softening labor market that's still very strong. If you look at CPI, people tend to focus on the core. It was up 5 percent in this last uh, number that came out. But if you strip out shelter, something we know a lot about, core CPI X shelter now less than 3 percent. So I think we're going to continue to see better than expected inflation numbers. But I think the Fed, given what they experienced in the 1970s, is going to stay vigilant. And I think what that will lead to is a slowdown in the U.S. and the global economy. And so I think we've got to anticipate that. The good news is we've gotten through this inflation shock we got through the interest rate shock, and now I think we right. have to deal with a bit of an economic slowdown, but we'll get through that as Let's well. Let's just talk about that slowdown, because that doesn't seem to be priced into the market right now, really. I mean, I think there's been a sense that there is a, even in the last couple of weeks, as you've seen this, I don't know if you want to call it melt up or, or you know, eight, 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 nine straight days here of, of, of what's been like a, a straight line up. Is that a function of the fact that people think that actually there's a soft landing, that maybe actually the Fed doesn't? Uh, go up two quarter points, maybe just goes up once? Well, I think what it reflects is the market is beginning to digest that this inflation scare is moving behind us. 
that, you know, in the short term, it looks like the Fed will go one time. Maybe they go a second time. But I think the data they will get is positive. And I think it reflects investors having more confidence about the future. If inflation behi is behind us, that's a positive. Right. If rates aren't going up, that's a positive. And so, yeah, right. there will be a slowdown. It may be a soft landing, right. maybe a little tougher than that. But I think the certainty about the environment is giving investors confidence. And I think that's why they're moving forward and in investing more. 